with the men's basketball team who are coming off the heels of their first conference loss of season two of the Temple Owls that actually dropped them to 18 and two overall five six and one in conference and they are uh, heading to Orlando for a date the second day against UCF following the home conference opener on New Year's Eve so uh, before we get into any clips, we're going to hear from Houston Cougars junior forward Jawan Roberts after what he had to say after Monday's practice. But just any any final thoughts now that we've had two days removed from that Temple game because obviously the story of that game was just the inability for Houston to be able to score offensively. But anything else that might uh, stick out to you now that you've had some some time off from that game on Sunday? Not much, really. Just um, Houston. I don't want to say beat themselves because Temple earned it. Their top two players played well and they executed well. But Houston, uh, I think, will dominate Temple in the next game. And so um, uh, nothing much. Houston ready to bounce back against UCF. I think uh, – I don't want to call it a rivalry, a school that we're used to seeing and going to see in the future as well when we go to the Big 12. So I'm excited to bounce back and see how they respond. You know, you don't want to call it a rivalry, but that, that's an interesting point that you bring up in regards to these are going to be two programs that see each other uh, a lot and often come because they're going to be heading to the Big 12 along with Cincinnati. Of course, last time that these two programs met, they gave each other. UCF gave Houston a lot of problems. And it was a, a game that came down not necessarily to a wire, but the Knights were right there with them towards the end of the game. Now, like I said, we do have post-game, post-practice footage of Houston forward Jawan Roberts. Here's what he had to say. Overall kind of takeaways of that loss to Temple. He said that he still feels like this team has another level, but when it comes to effort plays, that's been where Houston has been lacking over the course of the last week. Um, There's a little slippage in our defense. Not how we used to be before. Um... Just not playing with as much, you know, enthusiasm and much like emotion that we usually play with, and that's what happened, and it resulted in loss. So just moving forward, you know, we know what we got to do, and um, that one loss doesn't define our season, but it's just gonna help us grow and be a better team. Uh, um, just be locked in. Um, we already knew what position we was in. Um, we gonna get everybody the best shot uh, away and at home. And uh, you just can't sink down the team's level, you know, and um, just play the score. You know, you just got to play hard every possession. And um, we're going to bounce back from this uh, this lot stuff. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but we always keep it in our back pocket, you know, for games like that. And it was a great play. Um, just shot it a little left. But we always prepare for any moment. Sure. Uh, I'm glad it happened. Um, you know, just so, like I said, you can be prepared for it. And um, every, I feel like every time, you know, we do something wrong, it's always, you know, we can always learn from it. Um, even though we lost at home, you know, it's not something to really dwell on because it's not something that's going to define our season, like I said. But just to look at our mistakes in film and um, just learn from them and just try not to make them again. So I agree. Um, I think it's going to be different playing them the second time. Um, uh, we learned from that last game. And, you know, the best thing to do is to adjust. And, um, you know, it's just always about getting better. Um, we're not getting any worse. And we just want to improve as a team, you know, defensively, um, individual matchups, and um, just play our best. You know, even if we was to lose, you know, we'd rather lose, you know, playing our hearts out and not lose, you know, being soft. He's just very aggressive. Um, and, you know, the, the toughness that he has, you know, once he starts it, you know, we, we build off that. Mm-hmm. And, um, we decided, you know, to switch because we feel like we can guard better instead of, you know, being in our picking roles. And um, it worked out, you know. They were scoreless for the past seven minutes. And um, But Reggie, he always impacts winning, like, every single time. Um, just the way he plays, you know, he doesn't back down from anybody. And it just gives us a chip on our shoulders to, you know, once he lead, we'll lead with him. Um, so we missed. They got the rebound. Uh, I don't know if we wanted the foul call, but something happened. But, you know, everybody wasn't – everybody was arguing about the call. You know, I just sticked around because I seen Hicks uh, turn his head. He wasn't really paying attention. And I'm um, just seeing the ball right in front of me. So, instead of just running back, I just took it. What we see in the stats. We can definitely go to a higher level. Um, I feel like, you know, sometimes we underachieve, um, which is not good. And in the long run, it's not going to be good for us if we continue to underachieve. But we have another level to us. 
guarantee. Um, we just got to ball in and just, you know, play the system. It's just the urge of want to. Like, going into the game, you know, focusing on your assignment. You know, not letting this person get off a certain amount of threes. Not letting this person go to the free throw line. That's a one thing, you know. And um, going forward, we're going to have to, you know, be better at that. You know, limiting teams to a certain amount of shots. And um, just, you know, keep doing what we been doing and playing defense. So, once again, that was Houston Cougars junior forward, Jawan Roberts, talking about a lot of different things. But I think in particular, the one that stood out to me is towards that end of the clip when it comes to, one, he said he still feels the team has a different level, which, Dan, I get your thoughts right. But I, I tend to agree with that. But I think it's interesting that he mentioned kind of the, the effort level that's kind of been uh, not exactly word for what Robert said, but it's kind of been lacking over the course of the last week. Yeah, and, and I think it's just kind of going to the standard that was set before them on previous teams and the standard that Coach um, Samson has set there. And I think um, because I think he's saying that because we've seen guards have success, and not only that, just their team defense. But um, I think they they do have another places that they can go that they can get better and, and other levels they can reach you reach, and, and including rebounding. I mean that that's one thing that they aren't great at. They're routinely they've been great at, and I think they can do that as well as continue to be more consistently offensively as a team, and 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 ball movement is a huge key to that. Absolutely, that's a that's a great point when you talk about rebounding because it's kind of segue leading um to our other clip from Jawan Roberts. I asked him about what he thinks about the team's rebounding, but in that clip he also talks about the recent free the foul. Uh, Foul trouble that Jawan Roberts has been in. He also talked about the free throw shooting, particular to that game, uh, in regards to Temple, where he, and not just against Temple, but the last few games, he's been in foul trouble where it's really not allowed him to be on the floor come crunch time for the Houston Cougars. So here's what Jawan Roberts had to say in that aspect. Um, sometimes I, you know, lose focus, um, not realize what's going on. You know, I get a little handsy sometimes. And um, I can't be doing that. You know, it hurts the team. Um, I know I got to be better at that, but you know, it's nothing like you know intentional or you not know, just doing the game, thinking of trying to do too much. But it's just sometimes I be in the wrong place at the wrong times, and it's happening. I mean, like I, I know the value that I bring to this team, and I know you know I can do a lot to help this team. And um, just see myself not in the game, you know, not being in a situation, a position to help my team win. Um, it kind of sucks, but it's never nothing that I'd be mad about because I have confidence, you know, in my teammates. That they going to feel like me too. But, you know, just being out of the game and just knowing that, like, if I was in there, you know, I could have probably got a key rebound, you know, some. Uh, they do kind of sucks, but, you know, I'm just have to live with that. Not good at all. Um, we just, you know, just need more people, you know, going to the class. Um, but like I said, it's always something we can get better, better at. Um, but like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a want thing. Um, you gotta want to rebound. You don't. The ball is not just gonna come to you. It's a competition mm -hmm. between you and the other player. So um, it's just all about competing and wanting it more than the other team. And you know, had yeah, a couple games where we got I reminded this uh, this year. And there's not some, you know, that Houston is, you know, based off of. So we got to get back on track. You know what I mean? When we watch the film, you know, we see our effort. Um, sometimes it is kind of, you know, disappointing how we play sometimes. But, you know, we got to own up to that and just be like, you know, we're not, you know, that good of a rebounding team. And we need to be. You know, if we want to, you know, do something big in the tournament or, you know, lead to other accomplishments, uh, rebounding is a big key. Um, and everybody just needs to, you know, get on board and rebound. Um, everybody on the team is a rebounder, guards and bigs. Um, and just keep pounding the glass, you know. Once you get, you know, a couple offensive rebounds too, you know, that works, that works teams down. And, you know, teams don't want to play against that from the second. So just getting back to the top, you know, and doing what we've been doing, you know, I feel like it's going to help us a long way. I just say it was just one of them games, you know, you couldn't make a shot anywhere from the field. Mm -hmm. Like, you just couldn't do anything right. Um, we work on free throws every day, mm -hmm. and um, even some of our best free throw shooters miss free throws. You know, Tremont, right. Jarius, Marcus, um, we just won them games. 
So once again, Roberts talked about a lot of different things, but in particular when it comes to the rebounding component down, like you said at the before the clip, in regards to this Houston team in particular, and, and specifically when it comes to defensive rebounding, because when it comes to offensive rebound, Houston's still towards the top, not just in the American Athletic Conference, but when it comes nationally uh, to rebounding overall, in particular when it comes to offensive rebounds, but defensive rebounding, that's been a key issue for the Cougars. They're just averaging 26, just over 26 rebounds a game, and that is is 103rd nationally, which you're not used to seeing the Houston Cougars, a Calvin Sampson team that low when it comes to an area like rebounding. And you heard Roberts there in that clip. He himself said a lot of it. There, there's at times when they go back and watch film, they're disappointed with the effort that they see in that aspect of it. Yeah. And like he just said that the, everybody on the team is a rebounder and they need to have that mindset to go grab the rebounders. They wouldn't play their sticks out. As I say, that was in the game against Temple where Marcus um, went and got an offensive rebound and got a putback. I think he can do more of that. And I think the guards can rebound more. Just looking at some numbers right now, Tremont leads um, the guards and um, offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. And actually, Marcus only has eight more defensive rebounds than Terrence, Terrence Arsenal. And Terrence hasn't played anywhere near the minutes that Marcus has. So I think Marcus can do a, a better and a conscious job of crashing the boards or going down to get tips or, or even just helping on the glass. Jamal, um, he, he's done an okay job at rebounding. He's, he has more rebounds than Marcus defensively. But um, offensively, of course, J1, he, he leads the team in offensive rebounds with 52, and Jarius is behind him with um, 45. And another thing that I think what makes this team isn't a solid rebounding team is because Reggie isn't the best rebounder. I mean, looking at it, Terrence has more rebounds than Reggie, and Reggie has played a bulk of minutes, and he's a post player. And so I think that has a thing to do with it, but he does so many other things well and impacts the game in so many different areas. The team just has to have a collective effort of everyone going to the glass, and I, I think they'll do that. Well, another thing that stood out to me in that first clip where he talked about playing down to the level of your competition, and mm -hmm. I think they've done that in a, um, a few conference games in which they got to turn it up a notch, like he meant that intensity that focus and like he said in the foul trouble he kind of lose focus in regards to being conscious of how many fouls he have how important he is the time possession and what's going on in the game and so i think this team uh, is going to have a wake-up call with the tempo and they're going to refocus and kind of bounce back and continue to hit their stride as the season goes on one thing when it comes to this team about rebounding, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on, when you think of previous teams, I mean, going back to when I started covering them in 2019-20, there, there always seemed like there was an I identity guy when it comes to rebound and that 2019-20 team it was Nate Hinton which again from that guard position he was a guard that um, he would hound he just had an act for being able to be where the ball was after it came off the rim going a, a season ago of the following year when they made to the final four it was kind of a, a committee approach but obviously of course we knew that Justin Gorham he was a board man he was going to track down a lot of rebounds but the guards could rebound good as well as Quentin Grimes and Dejan Giroux were towards the top of the team when it came to rebounding. Last year's team, it was a much more veteran team, but obviously, of course, you knew that guys like Kyler Edwards, Fabian White, Josh Carlton, they were tracking down rebounds. This year's team, Jawan Roberts has done a good job of being able to rebound, and Jarris has picked it up during the, the most recent last two weeks. I mean, it was a big part why Jarris Walker was named the freshman of the week in the American Athletic Conference, because I think, I believe he averaged 12 rebounds a game in the two games that Houston played this past week. But there's not really that one guy that on a consistent night, you know, they're going to track down these rebounds. I think Tremont Marcus quietly, if you would have to pick one, it would be him. But I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. Outside of J1? Yes, sir. Outside of Jawan Roberts. Uh, I would say probably Jairus. Jairus goes to – he's a good rebounder and he rebounds well. But if I had to pick a guard, then I probably would say Tremont. I think if Terrence played more minutes, he would average more rebound. I think he's proven and is, is going to prove that he's going to be an excellent rebounder from the guard position. But I would have to say Jairus and then, then Tremont because Tremont does a good job of being active, going to the rebounds. He proved that in his freshman year in, in the NCAA tournament. So uh, I think he, he probably could pick his rebounding up a little bit more, although he has outstanding effort when he's um, going to the boards. I, I see him being active a lot, but I, I would pick those for sure. But like you say, I, outside of J1, it isn't that identity guy that's toughness because Houston normally has more than that. I know they had mm -hmm. Nate 
but they also had other guys who was just equally as tough who would do things like that. And so I agree with you 100%. But I think overall it just has to be a team effort. Absolutely. And I think the, the interesting thing you, you brought up, Jarris and Jawan Roberts was asked about Jarris Walker and in terms of his rebounding, he says he, he's done a lot to improve from where he was at the beginning of the season, but he said he feels that Walker has the potential to be getting 15, 16 rebounds a game in some of these outings. So mm-hmm. I think it's an interesting thing to watch. And like you said, it's something that Walker's improved on. But as the season continues, not just right. Walker and Roberts, but overall. Go ahead. He also said that, that it's a want to. Mm-hmm. And I think Jairus has to make up his mind that he wants to go out and not only rebound, but physically dominate. A lot of mm-hmm. times he's physical, especially, I mean, is um, not physical, is going finesse when he should be physical when guard, especially in the last game against Temple. It was times where the guards were on him, where the, it was done, or um, the other guard was switched on him, and he would have a finesse shot instead of backing them down and getting – um, a power move, you being physically, having that want to physically dominate. Not only that, if they switch on rebounds, just using his athletic ability and his physicalness that he can to go get rebounds. I think he could definitely do that. And that's something, if, if he stuck around with the program in years to co- for a couple more years, Coach Sampson and the staff will bring that out of him where he, he you see that on a consistent night-to-night basis. But I, I, I think he definitely has to have that want to. And he's just so young. He's still developing into that. He still is mm-hmm. gaining these experiences in the game and learning who he is as a player and playing against elite competition. And so um, I think he will get there, but he definitely um, has to turn it up a notch. Oh, Jarvis reminds me a lot of Quentin Grimes the first year he was here because he, he shows flashes yeah. of the the potential that he has. He shows flashes of it, but I know he had that stretch whenever they played Cincinnati, they played SMU, where it looked like he was kind of yet found the answers to it. But obviously, of course, he'd been dealing with, with the illness too. But that's what it reminds me. He'll have good stretches. Yeah. And then, like you said, it, it still seems like he's finding his way, in particular when it comes to the offensive side of things, where, like you said, he has the body to be dominant, especially when it comes to, to the physical component to it. It's just a matter of being able to be consistent with it. And like you mentioned, it took Quentin towards the end of his sophomore year, his first year here in Houston, and then come the year of the final four it was a completely different person when it came to confidence and knowing what kind of was expected of him yep and i remember that first year that you referenced and he had a game early in the year against rice where houston was Mm -hmm. down he literally took over and made shot Mm -hmm. after shot hunted the basketball but then it'd be quiet spells when you wouldn't hear from him and i remember watching him i was like it was often i would watch and think like he, he he didn't seem as he felt that he was the best player on the floor. Then you fast forward to that next year, the final four year, in which every every game he went out there, he knew he was the guy. And like it was a totally different confidence. I, I feel like they brought that dog out there, the, the heart of a line out of him, and you see what he's doing now. And I think the sky's the limit for him. But I think Jarris can could Houston could have that same effect on Jarris if he stuck around. But even in the short time that I expect for him to be here, I think as the season goes on and they continue to break down for him, be honest with one another, and accept criticism, accept honest coaching, I think he can get to that level because we've seen it in spurts. But just imagine if he hit his stride um, next month or when, when March comes in, he starts to put it together like we've seen in flashes. And so still got more time, but it definitely reminds me of times um, with Quentin as well. That's a good reference. 